let's call this YouTube video uh, Cows, Coalition of Western States, the Christian Identity Movement uh, tied into the Bundys and their little movement up in Malheur um, in Oregon. So I recently shared a podcast from Sheriff Ozzie, who is up in Spokane, and he does a regular podcast. In this particular one, it was called The Soul of America, and it was a three-part series. He starts talking about the Christian identity movement up in the Pacific Northwest and these two pastors, uh, Ann and Barry Bird, which I happen to have met and uh, know, and I actually met them on a couple of cases occasions. Uh, once in Kanab, Utah at LaVoy Finnicum's memorial, and then the other time was up in Washington. Uh, Kanab was obviously first. So on this um, podcast that I shared, it sparked some uh, Facebook posts amongst the uh, faux patriot movement. And uh, former politician Shelley Shelton, who basically is a crackpot, uh, had her 15 seconds of fame in the spotlight and now still thinks that uh, for some reason what she says matters and, and holds weight. I love it when these people come out and try and say that I haven't been somewhere or I don't know something or I don't have proof of something because I assure you I don't put anything out unless I absolutely have proof. And my proof goes above and beyond um, the average screen captures that most of you get. So let's talk about Shelly's uh, little post that she made here. This is it. Okay, so let me read it real quick. She's talking about me, and she says she did not attend any meeting. She was thrown out before the meeting even started. We were late getting there because we got lost. Ever heard of GPS? Uh, Michelle Fiore saw her in the crowd, and as soon as she walked in the door, Michelle, Michelle turned around immediately and walked out and told security. Yeah, let me just tell you, these guys are meal team six. Bunch of lard asses. Uh, she told security to drag that bee out of there. They pulled her out, asked her some questions along with some other people. It wasn't some other people. It was me and Dwayne Schrock, who Dwayne Schrock is the Committee of Safety uh, Sovereign Citizen kook that Ammon appointed um, in Malheur to be in charge of the these um, fraudulent citizen grand juries. We'll go into all the citizen, sovereign citizen stuff at a later date. Uh, part of the reason that she was kicked out was because she has latched on to an older man and he's married and she's promised that she would marry him and was sleeping with him in a local hotel to gain access to the event that was open to the public for the most part. Right, she doesn't go into details about how the meeting that we went to was invite only. And this is their little seditionist meeting, so stick with me here. Um, her adultery violated the standards of the community and they did not want her on the private property. She on the liberal boards has openly admitted that the sole reason she was there was to get information she could feed to the FBI. She is an admitted informant and everyone listed on the screenshots above knows that she is an admitted informant, yet they still associate with her. Okay, now, so she's going to talk, reference Team ISIS here. Um, there are others who have joined in her quest to get Kelly, Gavin, and Michelle Fiore arrested. Shelly, you are 100% right on that accusation. I can't wait to see Michelle Fiore arrested. And it's coming. Um, it is, it's always the same few names all the time. Okay, so let's... Take a look at the invitation. Now, the invitation did not go to me because obviously these people would not uh, have sent the invitation to me because I started calling them out on their BS as soon as I kind of figured out what was going on up in Malheur and I had been able to add those events to the past two years uh, since 2014 Bunkerville. So, see, I've been at this a lot longer than you johnny come lately who think that you're an expert on everything. So, here you go. This is a Gmail. Okay, this was forwarded to me by the person who invited me. The person who invited me is Dwayne Schrock. Uh, let's see, so here we go. Dwayne Schrock, right there. Okay. Uh, so this is from Ann Bird. Dear friends, the purpose of this note is to invite you to a special meeting that will be hosted by Representative Matt Shea John Jacob Schmidt, Representative Heather Scott, Pastor Barry, and Ann Bird. We have heard from most of you that you will be attending Marble Country's 2016 God and Country Celebration this coming weekend, which is largely focused on building a resistance 
to the globalists' relentless assault on our liberty in the United States. Do you guys actually have proof of this globalist uh, cabal? Because I'd like to see the uh, the roster. I mean, not, let's go ahead and put that up, you know. Um, however, our hope is to go way beyond resistance and find the heart of God for becoming effective builders of a new and full expression of liberty once again. We are inviting only those people to this meeting whom we believe to be part of that solution. Because of your hatred for tyranny and your passion, passion for Christian liberty, we are filled with so much anticipation of what God is planning to do throughout the weekend. So, of course, we want you to be here for the whole thing. The pre-meeting will give you a head start and is by invitation only. Let me show you that part. Right there. By invitation only. Okay? So, then it goes on to list uh, time and where the sanctuary of the Marble Community Fellowship Building in the middle of the celebration grounds. Um, okay, so then... Um, I'm going to cover their phone numbers, but there you go. Quick glance. There's an attachment right there. Attachment. Okay, so let's take a look at the attachment. This is their uh, itinerary. Okay. So, Dwayne Schrock, my little buddy. Okay, I didn't really know Dwayne Schrock, um prior to let's see june 2016 which was the father's day memorial thing that Dwayne put together for jeanette um i had attended that with um a couple of people and i was still kind of uh not completely um apprised yet of everything that was going on like i said it took some time to put all of this together but i already had plenty of suspicions going on so here's Dwayne. Sheriff Woody, remember he's the one that had the little fake star right there. There you go, Sheriff Woody. That's Dwayne Schrock, Committee of Safety. Here's Dwayne at the refuge, hanging out with Ammon and Gun It Shauna Cox. Okay, so Dwayne um, came to the, um, campground that we were staying at for the, for the, uh, Father's Day weekend, and I had pulled him aside, and I said, hey, I want to talk to you about this cows organiz organization. I said, you know, this Anthony Bosworth and Matt Shea, Michelle Fiore, I said, these guys are all crooked, and I'm going to tell you why. And he was interested and wanted to hear about it, and he said he had his own doubts because, um, he and Michael Emery had been talking, and Michael Emery had said that cows is dirty. Well, let me just tell you, cows is more than dirty. These guys are white supremacists, they're white nationalists, and right now they have kind of like their nice facade on, the nice face of, oh, we're just Christians, we're just patriots. No, these guys have um, a history, and that's what Sheriff Ozzy goes into in this Soul of America podcast, um, the history of this Christian identity movement. And this year, well, that particular year, they tried to or no, I think it was last year, they tried to uh, clean up their act because they invited a black person to speak. I, I mean, these guys are really pathetic. So at any rate, uh, no, I did not go after Dwayne Schrock so that I could get an invite to the meeting because I didn't even know about the meeting. The, the invitation had been sent to Dwayne, not to me. So how would I even know about the meeting? I knew nothing about it. Uh, Dwayne started um, coming on to me. Um, I, in no way, shape, or form, went after him. Uh, the information that I had on him, and this even came from his own mouth, is, is that he was single. He wasn't dating anyone. He had been dating someone named Susie Pierce. Uh, but he said, oh, I'm not in love with her. I don't date her anymore. She just has my cows. Uh, short story there. He basically used her, found her on, I don't know, rancher.com, some dating website, and he conned her into taking his cows and grazing them on, on her property in California. That turned out, turned out to be a big financial mess for her. I did help uh, Susie with uh, showing her the, the lawsuits that Dwayne was involved in. Um, the guy is basically a scam artist. He's a liar. Uh, he still lies to this day, but fortunately, uh, text messages are forever. So, text message between me and Dwayne. Okay. 
I'm green, obviously. Dwayne is gray. Okay, he says, may I be blessed with your presence on Friday? I can pick you up at the airport in Spokane, Washington. Pre-meeting Friday noon with Matt Shea and Heather Scott, cows, I was personally sent an invitation via email to be there. Committee of Safety Workshop. This might be a good time for an all ears session. Okay, um, at this point in time, um, I was driving back to Nevada uh, with Bran Thornton. So I told Dwayne, yeah, I absolutely, I want to know about, more about this cows organization and I definitely want to attend. But I'm financially strapped because, you know, I was a student when all of this started. And unlike the, um, the grift crowd that's constantly out on the sidewalk on Facebook um, grifting for their PayPals uh, to be filled up, I don't do that. I run under my own steam. Well, Dwayne wanted me there so bad that he actually paid for the entire freaking trip. Everything. Covered 100% of it. So he gave me his credit card number and um, had me book a flight. So here's the flight. And you can see the date here. Okay, so there you go. Here's me on the plane. There's my ticket. Here's a, here's a connecting flight. Here's Dwayne. Can you still see the date? Um, here's my ticket. Connecting flight. Okay, so Dwayne's the one that was the hot and heavy and had come up with this grand plan of, um, hey, why don't we get married up there and all this. It's, I mean, totally an irrelevant story. The guy is a player. He's a con artist. Please. Um... Let's see, so this one is from Denver to Boise. Again, a connecting flight. There you go. This is me landing. Again, I'm green. There's Dwayne. Uh, I think this one was me going home, so he paid for that also. Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry, that was... Uh, Oh, that was the, the yeah, that, I think that was the re, return flight. Yeah, that was my return flight. Um, I had to book it while I was um, traveling. So he paid for that too. Um, let's see, this is me landing. Okay. So he picks me up in Boise, Idaho, and we drive up to Marble. Um, he slept, I drove. Uh, he had been awake all night driving from uh, Crane, Oregon, where he lives, over to Boise. So I drove. Um, this is, we went straight to the meeting. This is a photo I took. Okay, so that's the entrance to their compound, and it is a compound. Um, rules and guidelines. These are all uh, documents that they were handing out up there. And yes, they did have their version of security, which was a bunch of uh, chubby boys marching around with uh, AR-15s uh, playing uh, pretend little green army guys. Here's the compound. Okay. And uh, yeah, we, we passed through the little checkpoints and actually what happened is um, I saw Anthony Bosworth and I can't stand that little leprechaun and he identified me so it wasn't that Michelle saw me when she first walked into the meeting which was already underway by the time she walked in because as uh, Shelton stated they were lost and they were late the meeting had started and I'll tell you what Matt Shea was presenting at the front of the room uh, Bosworth had radioed ahead and said oh hey uh, you know Melissa's here because I was already calling them out on their BS um, based on conversation that Ammon Bosworth and I had at the refuge. I knew at that point that Ammon was crazy. There's old Pastor Barry. Okay. There's Ann. All part of the Christian identity movement. Been around for a long time. Sheriff Ozzie goes into it. Okay, so when we walked into the meeting, um, we got in okay. Um, I would say we were in there at least five minutes. So, this guy, Representative Matt Shea, the seditionist, 
So he's at the front of the room and he's giving a PowerPoint presentation and talking about the, all these groups and organizations that um, they're going to work with, that they, they have ties to. Um, they, he's saying that he has um, people deeply seated in important government positions uh, that are going to be part of this resistance. So these guys have really built up quite the seditionist movement. And let me just tell you that when they go around and they sell this, and this is, this is a true conspiracy. So when you guys got charged with conspiracy, this is why. Because if you think that the FBI doesn't already know about this group when the Christian identity movement has been around for years, you guys are even dumber than I've given you credit for. So, you know, let me just give you a word of caution real quick here. You all need to go crawl back in your hidey holes, put your tinfoil hats back on, and just, you know, contain your drooling and babbling um, to your own home, your own basement, your mommy's basement. Because I'm going to tell you, your uh, freedom and liberty that you all love to spout off about so much, it's going to be curtailed real quickly. And you're going to experience the same kind of Bundy freedom that uh, Greg Burleson is experiencing right now. That would be 68 years in the federal penitentiary. So my suggestion is, if you've got the goods on any of these people, and you've heard something, you've been in a meeting, you've got screen captures, I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to send them to uh, bundyscam at gmail.com. And I will make sure that they get to the right people. So another point that Shelly's correct on. You bet your ass, honey. Anything that I see about a bunch of kooks going up um, and trying to take over uh, the Pacific Northwest and their uh, Christian identity and white nationalists and white supremacists, and you're threatening to kill people and hurt people and blow up buildings, you bet your ass I'm going to report that, as any sane person would. You know, we're not about that. There's a point where, you know, you learn how the political system works and you go get laws repealed. You don't blow up buildings, kidnap children, and uh, bring long arms to a, you know, government standoff. You people are ridiculous. So here, the New York fraud walks in. Brooklyn bouncing Betty. She, she was the belle of the ball. Bing, bing, bing. Mache says, folks, the star of our our weekend is here. Michelle Fiore, isn't she great? Bing, bing, bing. And the crowd goes wild. Ah. So sad. I mean, really, are your standards that low that you have to accept someone from Brooklyn, New York, who puts on a fake persona of a pistol-packing mama while at the same time she's, she's flouting the Bible by voting for same-sex marriage because her mother is a lesbian? And, I mean, look, the list is long that I have on Michelle Fiore. We'll get there. I have to, like, baby step you all through this. So we get kicked out of the meeting because uh, Fiore walks in and she's like, oh, you, oh, uh -uh. you, uh, uh you're not here, out of here. Um, this is at some church that they've got there. So, you know, they've got a lot of money invested in this thing. And one would question where the hell they even get their money. Uh, I don't think it's selling survival food on the weekends. Um, I've given you a, a, a YouTube video previous, previously about Cope Reynolds and Anthony Bosworth and Gavin Syme, how all these people are interconnected because they're all part of this cows list. And again, I've done previous YouTube videos where I give the cows roster who all's involved. So you should be able to pretty much see the big picture by now. There's not a whole lot of puzzle pieces to be put back in into uh, the frame here. So we we uh, booted out, and because Dwayne is with me, and I don't really know him that well yet, and I don't know like what position he'll take since he's Mr. Committee of Safety, um, I just kind of give him a hard time, and, and we leave. It wasn't really that big of a deal. I mean, had I known what they were going to be discussing at that time, I definitely would have wanted to stay, and I definitely would have recorded it. But I kind of have a sneaking suspicion that someone did record it up there, and I'm just hoping that person comes forward at some point in time. And you can definitely get it to me because I'm not afraid of these people. Um, you know, I've received tons and tons of death threats and, and everything else. I've been doxxed a bazillion times. I don't even care. Uh, so the next day, um, 
it might have been that night or the next day. I don't recall the time frame. Oh, it was June 30th. It's here on the text message. Uh, Dwayne, because he's good friends with Ann and Barry Bird, he calls them his dear friends. Uh, he sends her a text because I said, you know what? I said, let me talk to Matt Shea. I, I want to know why Gavin didn't show up at the refuge when he was committed to showing up and he was supposed to be putting out all of these informational videos and he never showed. And again, I've shared this before that Ammon got ticked off that Gavin Syme never showed up. So Dwayne says, hi, Ann. It pains me to have to ask you this. I need 15 minutes with Matt tomorrow anytime matt melissa and me i'm trying to head off a bigger problem and phil this is the best way to thwart that you're my dear friends i wouldn't ask this if i didn't think it was the utmost importance thank you uh Dwayne. and then um she replies back Dwayne. um i just got the message i'm so sorry about what's going on i will talk to matt and i'm sure he'll be, he'll be glad to talk to you okay there you go um We'll text you back as soon as I find out when will that work. We are so grateful that you aren't quitting on us. See, their whole shtick um, is contingent upon getting more and more people sucked into this. And as you are lower and lower on the totem pole, the less and less you know. But technically, by law and by statute, you're still part of the conspiracy. Especially if you start taking marching orders from these idiots and they tell you to show up with a long arm or a pistol somewhere or go drop a bomb somewhere or go kidnap someone. You're part of the conspiracy. You may not know what the blueprint of the grand scheme is, but, you know, it's like you have to think about the mob. Every little runner that they have or mule or whatever that they have out on the street is not privy to what the head king boss knows. Okay, but it's still all part of the, the conspiracy. Um, Dwayne replies back. He says, uh, that'll work. Um, something, something, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she says, sorry, Dwayne. Matt is in a closed meeting and has turned his cell phone off. Can I let you know, know in the morning? He says, still here waiting for your response. Thank you. Uh, she replies back, sorry, Dwayne. Matt just got here. He would be glad to meet with you. I'll have him call you. Okay, then she shares... Uh, Matt's cell phone info. Uh, did you receive Matt's number? Red Buck is giving you a hand up this morning. I don't know what that was about. Um, I wasn't really, I didn't know Sarah Red Buck at that point in time, but come to find out later, she uh, was going to also insert herself in this mess because she's a narcissist. We could probably talk about her um, on another video. I still have plenty to share about Sarah Red Buck. So this was an interesting conversation that Dwayne relayed to me because like I said, he and Michael Emery had been talking and Emery knew that Cal's was dirty and he had actually kind of convinced Dwayne to stay away from him. And then um, Dwayne ends up getting completely sucked in by hooking up with some little private Facebook group. I don't think he even ever really knew the women in, in person. Um, you know, you people that are in these private groups on Facebook, you don't know these people. I, I don't understand why you jump in these groups and you tell people um, private information and you discuss things back and forth. I mean, this is a regular patent place. This is like a Kardashians for mentally handicapped faux patriots. It's, it's really sad. I mean, you're grown adults and libraries are still free. Go check out a library and find out how you repeal a law, okay? Because the way that you guys are going, not the way. If you'll notice, President Trump, who I support also, he does everything by the law. And that's why all of these other groups haven't been able to take him down. Because he follows the law. In the law, there is safety. Even if it's a law you don't like, it protects you. So at one point in time, Dwayne was talking to Barry Bird. And Barry had disconnected the call, or rather thought he disconnected the call, but he actually had not. And he was, and the call was still live. And I've shared this before, but Dwayne heard him say, Matt might have to flush Harney County. To me, this directly shows that Matt Shea, Michelle Fiore, and the rest of the cows, um, roster were directly involved in planning Malheur because by this time we all know that Ammon Bundy 
absolutely did not have a vision and uh, God did not tell Ammon Bundy to go to Malheur. Okay, so we end up um, staying up there a couple of days. Um, we come back. Uh, you know, I got as much information as I could because, yes, I know that cows is dirty. And after seeing this meeting and after getting booted out of it, um, that even confirms uh, more solidly that they are dirty. So I had stayed in touch with Dwayne, and yeah, we had a little bit of a relationship, but um, as I found out more about him, and I did find out that he was still married um, on our ride back down to Portland, uh, the story there is, is that he's been separated from his wife for nine years. Uh, they're still married. Dwayne says that the reason why he's still married is because he doesn't want to have a court order for child support. I was able to confirm uh, that he does not have a, ch a court order for child support. I'll show you that document. Um, the only thing that the court has ordered him to do is to pay $80 a month for uh, health care. And then he gives Susan Schrock, um, I guess, whatever money she asks for. Uh, his son by now should be 18. That was the last child he had at home. Uh, Dwayne is a real piece of work. He's a real scam artist. Uh, first off, he came on to me. Uh, he was using me before I was ever using him because actually I never used him. He invited me to the meeting and yeah, of course I wanted to go. But uh, beyond that, I never used him for anything. Uh, I actually thought he was genuine and legitimate in his uh, interest. But the more I started looking into it and it didn't take long uh, to for him to reveal his true colors. Um, I'm pretty good at, at digging and fishing when I start suspecting that something is off. So he's been married to Susan, at, but separated for nine years. Um, he was dating Susie Pierce, found her on ranchers.com, uh, conned her into taking his cattle, selling cattle under his name, um, taking the hit um, on the taxes for them because he can't sell because he has 31 outstanding lawsuits against him, and I'll show you those. Uh, let me back up just a touch. I had been working on getting, uh, filing a complaint to get Mike Arnold disbarred in Portland, Oregon because of his uh, conduct on the case. That was, like I said, still at the point in time where I wasn't completely apprised of everything that was going on. Still thought um, there might be some innocence in that. Uh, obviously, I was 100% completely wrong. I don't have a problem admitting that because, uh, you know, I follow truth. And I kept coming up with dead ends when, with everything that these people were saying and presenting. So I had spent about five hours compiling information on Mike Arnold to get him disbarred, going through all the all the points of law, uh, what he had done that was the most egregious besides take $90,000 uh, that supporters had donated and then he uh, abandons his bar license and goes and becomes a pot farmer. Uh, he put, um, I guess they were going to be witnesses, but he put their name, address, and phone number out over the internet because he was trying to uh, data mine everyone and was Facebook friending everyone or um, yeah Facebook friending everyone to try and get information um, he was data mining their their timelines uh, many of you know he wrote a book at a later point in time I mean this guy was a shyster from the word go and I knew that from the minute that I met him and when he came to Las Vegas Nevada I actually confronted him at the courthouse and said hey why are you even here uh, you know, who paid for your trip here? Why are you here? And he couldn't get away from me fast enough. And then within 15 minutes of being told no cell phones in the courtroom, he had pulled his out, made sure the marshal saw it, and got himself ejected and spent the rest of the day, uh, you know, getting his face in front of the camera down on the Las Vegas uh, court stuff. So the guy's a real jackass. Uh, Dwayne was at first going to help me. He had actually met with some some of the private investigators talked about the affidavits, blah, blah, blah. Um, in the end, what happened is uh, Dwayne took all of the affidavits that all of the people in Harney County had had signed, gone and got notarized, and Dwayne hijacked them, and who knows what happened to them. But um, with the information that I had, I could have gotten Mike Arnold disbarred. This is Susie Pierce. I don't really care if she doesn't want to be identified too bad. She stabbed me in the back before. She sends me this private message and tells me, oh, Dwayne is mine. 
We're in love with the same man. No, we're not. But she wants to talk to me. So here she's trying to show off. Look, Dwayne came back to me. Good riddance, I say. He's all yours. Um, then Dwayne got caught in this um, Facebook private group that he was in. I mean, the guy's a real creep. You know, these are all him. Here's the one where, and somebody sent these to me. I don't, I don't know who sent these to me. I suspect it's probably a fake name anyway. Um, so whoever this anonymous person is, they're saying, so she, meaning me, figured she would sleep her way to the top because that's the only thing you people can ever accuse me of is that I've slept with someone. All I can say is I must be one fine piece of ass that everybody wants to sleep with me. Uh, Dwayne says, I had a personal invite from Matt Shea to meet him in Washington State. She didn't sleep with me on Father's Day weekend of the memorial. So there we go. Let's put that rumor to rest. That's from Dwayne Schrock. Can you see his little avatar? That's a little notebook that he carries around with him that says free the Hammonds. At a later date, I contacted him via text and I try to set the record straight. For the record, you made, made the move on me, blah, blah, blah. He admits. True. So, no, Shelly, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I never made the move on Dwayne. Didn't know anything about the meeting. Dwayne is the one that invited me. I was not invited. It was him that was invited. Uh, here's Dwayne Schrock. These are all the lawsuits that he has against him. Two pages worth. And I think it was a total of 31, uh, 35. 35 lawsuits. I mean, 3,800, 7,100, 5,300, 1,200, uh, 10,842,2,700. Um, Someone was sending me private messages uh, telling me that there were a lot of people in, I can't remember, I think it was Portland, but anywhere somewhere on the west side of, of Oregon were looking for Dwayne because I guess he would go and get hay and then not pay for it, stuff like that. And he moved out to Crane, uh, Oregon, so that he could hide from all of his creditors and all the people that were suing him. Um, this is the confirmation that he doesn't pay child support, but he was ordered to pay some medical. So at least that part of what he told me was true. But he is still married to Susan. Um, it's interesting. Now uh, this Julie Embry, who is a fake judge out of Texas, who was married at the point in time that she started cavorting with Dwayne. Um, I guess she's left that marriage. Now she lives with Dwayne and Crane, but he's still married. But somehow I'm the villain here. This is uh, one of the judgments on Dwayne. As you can see, these are Harney County right there. Okay, this, this judgment was for over $33,000. So that's the real story about Marble Washington. Uh, there's definitely a lot more to be told. Uh, so we'll just keep going. But if you're thinking about getting out of this, this movement because you're finally starting to see this connection to blue ISIS and all this nonsense, let me just tell you, all they're doing is starting to remove the sheepskin from the wolf. So my suggestion is don't follow the blue ISIS crowd steer clear of these people. Uh, the Bundys are absolutely tied in with them because uh, the whole Malheur event was planned by Cows and Ammon.